Hi, everyone. Grandmaster Ben Feingold here. I just finished um, reading some of your comments, and I'm wondering if you guys are getting dumber or louder. But uh, keep them coming because it keeps me amused. Um, okay. Um, so I drew, of course, um, although one of my subscribers is like, don't tell us the result. So, um, so I'm just kidding for that person. But for the people who are listening, I did draw. Um, well, Nikhil had lost his first two games, and I drew my first two games. So I guess I won the battle because I drew. Hooray. Um, I just got a, a text from Anish Giri saying good job. Okay, so three games, three draws. This game was the most interesting, although it was really boring considering it was so interesting. So there you go. The mysteries of life. Uh, I like the person who said, don't hit www. That was funny. So, yeah, go to atlchessclub.com and don't put in the www. Otherwise, you'll waste valuable seconds. Okay, you guys are funnier than I thought. Maybe you guys are funny and I'm not. Okay, so um, I was why, and my original intention was to just play nonsense because Nikhil is very well prepared. I was coaching him at the World Youth um, in Batumi where he won the World Championship. Um, and he has uh, other Grandmaster coaches that he works with throughout the year. Um, and during the tournament. So I know he knows a lot of theory. Okay, but instead of playing nonsense, I looked at his games and I decided to play this line that I used to play. I guess I'm the used to police. So I played d4, I'm white. And we played a queen's gambit declined. And I noticed in this move order in my database, all of his opponents either play bishop f4 here or c takes d5, followed by bishop f4. Um, which I've never played. I always play knight f3 and bishop g5. And I didn't see any games that he had in this line, and I probably have about 100. So even though Nikhil knows more theory than I do, I figured my greater experience would win the day. And also, instead of playing nonsense and being worse, I can just play good moves and be slightly better. Okay, he played h6, which I expected. Um, and in this position, the main move is rook c1, and almost every move is theory, queen c2, queen d2, queen b3. Um, and I usually play queen d2, although to be honest, I haven't had this position in a long time, probably years. Um, sure, why exactly? I guess the QGD is not the most popular for black anymore, um, at the lower levels anyway, you know, my level. Uh, okay, so queen d2 is a move that was played before all of you were born in a Karpov-Kasparov match. I think Karpov played it more than once. And I faced a lot of stuff here. And actually, if my opponent had played either knight c6 or c6 or b6, which are all the main lines, I was going to play stuff I hadn't played before that I had prepared for this game. Um, but my opponent took on c4, which I've also faced. And then in this position, the main moves are knight d7 and c5. And in fact, I faced those moves. Although when I was preparing for the game, uh, right before the game actually, I was looking mainly at c5, and I knew what to do against the hat. My opponent played knight d7, and even though I faced this before, I wasn't sure what the main line was. So now I started doing some serious thinking. That's right, I said thinking. Anyway, um, I thought if I thought forever and played the best move, whatever that is, that he would keep playing quickly since Nikhil had more time than he started with here. He was still in his prep. So I thought I had to somehow make a good move that wasn't theory, which isn't easy. Um, my move is okay, and it's not theory, so I sort of accomplished my goal. Um, I've actually had this position before in a U.S. championship, um, and I've played rook d1 here, uh, which doesn't really prevent c5. So, um, and this is the way Karpov-Kasparov went in the world championship match before all of you were born. Okay, you guys should, you know, start getting bored over here. All right, so I, I played bishop b3, and the idea is, in a lot of positions, when black plays either e5 or c5, I want to play d5, and then knight b6 doesn't attack my bishop and, and my d-pawn. So I play bishop b3 a lot in this opening, but just not in this position. Um, and he did play c5, and after a long thought, I decided not to play d5. So that was funny. Um, the reason I didn't play d5, I don't know if I'm right, although when I looked at the game with the engine a few minutes ago, d5 wasn't one of the moves, so I, I guess I'm right. Um, I was worried about bishop takes 
c3, and if I take with the queen, uh, after knight f6, I'm in sort of a quandary here. Um, I don't want to lose my bishop. If I move it somewhere, bishop c4 somewhere, then after knight e4, I don't see a way to stop queen a5 check, although I see one now. I could play queen a3, which is a strange move, uh, although I didn't see queen a3 when I was doing the analysis. I guess that stops queen a5 check. Although, I don't know why I'd want to play this. After queen a3, bishop g4, I assume black is better. Um, yeah, I don't like this at all. Okay, so I didn't like d5, even though that was sort of the reason I played bishop b3, but that's why pencils have erasers. Okay, so after c5, I just castled. And now we, we're almost transposed into theory because castles is a very is a common move instead of bishop b3. And then after c5, I could just pretend that I castled first then played bishop b3. Although bishop b3 doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, and I was pretty sure he would take on d4 here, but he played b6. Okay, and he wants to play bishop b7 or bishop a6. But now all that nonsense I just showed you doesn't happen because I castled. So now I play d5. Um... Computer, depending on how long it thinks, thinks I'm up 0.1 or 0.2. I think if you let it sit like overnight, it would probably say equal. But I thought I was a little better. Okay, and he has lots of moves. He took on d5. For the most part, we played the computer moves this game. I'll show you the one move that I made that the computer thinks I could have played better. Uh, Bishop takes d5. All the captures are about the same. Rook b8. Uh, rook a d1. And here, black has more than one move. He played bishop c3, which is fine. And he played queen e7. Computer says I have to play e4 if I want to try for an advantage. And now he made probably his only move of the game the computer doesn't say is, is good. Um, although I think if we go back after castles, I don't think the computer plays b6 here, but it says it's okay. Um, and after e4, I was really surprised by his move. I thought he would play uh, rook f8, although I think the engine plays bishop b7. But he played knight f6. And the knight was on d7 in this position, and now it's not on d7. So that means he gave up control of e5. Ergo, knight e5, threatening knight c6, which you see, and knight g6, which you don't see. And here he had the longest think of the game for him. Uh, and he played a move I didn't see, and the computer says the best move. So I guess thinking is good for you. Um, he put his hand over his bishop. Of course, if he plays bishop b7, I play knight g6 and win. Um, bishop a6 is playable because it attacks my rook on f1. Maybe he was going to play that. I'm not sure. Uh, his move is best. I totally missed it. I mean, he's threatening knight c6, so I mean, I'm threatening knight c6. Somebody's threatening knight c6. And he played queen c7. So now knight c6 doesn't fork anything. And I thought forever, and I broke my rule, of course, I couldn't decide between two moves here. So I'd like to keep my bishop, but he's always threatening to take it. And I can't really move it anywhere because my e-pawn would be hanging. And bishop a6 gains a tempo on my rook so he can get his rook out. So I was seriously considering rook f e1, which is the computer recommendation. Uh, now bishop a6 doesn't gain a tempo on my rook, so it's not a good move. And my e-pawn's defended. And if he trades on d5, for example, now my rook is well-placed on e1 because it's defending my knight. Um, and it's an e-file. So I almost played rook f e1, and somehow I decided f3 was better. Computer says after rook f e1, I'm up about 0 0.3, 0 0.25, and after f3, maybe like 0.1. So I think knight f6 was his worst move of the game, and f3 was my worst move, but, you know, for worst moves, they're not so bad. Um... Okay, I mean, F3 is okay, but rook F1 is more accurate. Now, bishop A6 gains a valuable tempo, rook F1, and now rook BE8. And I thought I had an advantage, and I, I did, but probably not as much as I thought. And now I just couldn't find anything. Uh, my knight's attacked, so I moved it away. Knight C4. Uh, computer says bishop C4 is also a move, but it's, I mean, it's like point 0.1. Okay, and he took on D5. And he played rook to d8. I thought he would play bishop takes c4 and then rook to d8, which is also equal. Um, he played rook to d8. I played knight to e3. And now this is a good time to pause your video. It's not exciting, but it's interesting. When I played knight e3, 
and my opponent was thinking about his move, I realized what the best move for him was, and he thought for a while, and he did play the best move. This is clearly the best move for black. And I think for a lower-rated player, it's really hard to find. So pause your video, try to find the computer-recommended move here. Okay, so, well, if you've watched my videos and remember my rules, always retreat. Okay, and this move isn't that hard to find, but the idea is I want to play knight f5, also known as knife f5, and that threatens queen g7 mate. And as bishop on a6 isn't really doing anything now, so bishop c8 is the best move. And I expected that, and he played it. And now knight f5 is innocuous, and he's going to play bishop e6 next move, and it's just completely equal. I played Rook e d1 and offered a draw. Um, I had... 10 minutes left, and he had 25. He thought for five minutes, and he declined. And now the computer says it's equal if I retreat to d3, which I actually didn't look at. I did look at going to d2, which is also good. Um, let me explain the difference. If he takes the rook, I can take it with the queen controlling the d file. And now if he takes my pawn, b3 should be better for white. I don't know if white's winning, but probably. Um, but... So he can't do that. But if I play rook to d2, and I can't take with the queen, because he could play bishop takes a2. Although I guess I could do that, but I don't want to do that. If I take with the rook, I'm not controlling the... Or I can mouse slip. I'm not controlling the d file, which I would be if I had played rook d3 and taken with the queen. So I could do rook d3 and it just says all zeros. Rook takes d8 is fine. And here I could play knight d5, which is also all zeros, but since I had 10 minutes left, I thought we'll just vacuum the board, as they say. And after thinking five minutes, I left this on for five minutes, it says b3 is very slightly better than a3. Um, I couldn't decide, but I wasn't going to take five minutes figuring it out, so I just played a3. And computer prefers black by about 0 0.07 here. Um, but okay, I mean, it's obviously a draw with correct play. And my opponent played king f8 and offered a draw. And now it actually says it's all zeros if I play king f1. But okay, I mean, it's not the most exciting position. Uh, it was funny, I, I ran into Varakobian, and he fell down. No. And uh, after the game, and he was like, how did you do? And I said, obviously, I drew. And he said, oh, that was an interesting game. And I said, that was an interesting game? Um, I mean, for some grandmasters, those kinds of strategical battles are interesting when it seems like, one side has a slight advantage, their side's trying to equalize, you try to see who can do what. And, well, considering Nikhil's only 12 years old, he defended really well. I think at least 9 or 10 times in the last 13 or 14 moves, he made the absolute best computer move. And occasionally made probably the only move to maintain equality. So, um, pretty nice game, <coughs> excuse me, from both of us, since there were no blunders, but... I mean, I'm playing really slowly because I can't see anything anymore. So if I played quicker, I'd probably blunder. And if I play this slow and the game gets complicated, I'll blunder later. So i got to figure out some way to play faster and better. That's all I have to do, faster and better. Okay, now the main way to make me play faster and better is to donate. So you can go to atlchessclub.com or you can go to www.atlchessclub.com. You can go to either one. You can probably type in some other stuff too. Um... And follow me on, you know, Twitter or Facebook, whatever they're called nowadays. And um, let's see, subscribe and like and dislike and write your crazy comments that you always write. Tell me how I should make my, my YouTube page better so I can ignore it. I mean, so I can follow your instructions. And like so. Um, let's see, tomorrow I have white again. I try to have white every round. That's my only hope. Again, Nicholas Cheka. Check uh, once this this evening against um, the Turkish player um, who has a lot of names, Ali Maradi, I think. Um, I drew him in round two. So the guy that I drew in round two, um, where I was black and a French. Um, that was a crazy game. You can follow the games live everywhere, uschesschamps.com or www. And also at Chess24. I'm not sure if you have to be a member or not. Um, I get free membership everywhere, so... I recommend you guys become Grandmasters so you could do that too. Um, so Chess24, uschesschamps.com, possibly Chess Bomb has it, I don't know. They should, but you know who knows. And you can follow my games live 
Um, then you don't have to wait for my crazy videos. All right. See you guys next time. Bye, everyone.